Hans Rosling's Generalization Instinct from his hit book, Factfulness, 10 Reasons Why We're Wrong About the World and Why Things Are Better Than You Think. Yeah. According to Rosling himself, the generalization instinct is the tendency to automatically categorize and generalize our worldview. This instinct can make us assume everyone or everything is in one category is similar, and it is a necessary part of human function and the understanding of the world and our surroundings. In order to think effectively, our brains have to make generalizations because we do not have enough memory or time to analyze all the available information at once. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Even though this is an essential part of our lives, this instinct makes it easy to make overgeneralizations that are harmful and inaccurate. It can also lead to one majority opinion that is incorrect. Now to the show! Why do people always think that dumbs are so blunt? Like, I'm just living my life. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. People keep staring and typing me as a dumb blonde. Like, oh, I don't bother them, they keep bothering me. Oh, did you hear about the new Taylor Swift concert? Yes, I feel I'm 22. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh my God, guys, look what I just found. Popular culture portrays white women with blonde hair as beautiful but dumb. However, millions of people in the US spend over a billion dollars to change the color of their hair. Many of the blondes are actually not that dumb. It's a stereotype, also known as a myth. Um, our IQs are actually really high. We have the same IQs as brown hair, um, ginger hair, um, orange hair, and red hair. So. It shows that our intelligence is not based on our hair color, but it's actually based on our hearts. Yes, queens! Uh, where's everyone going? Guys! <laughs> What's up, guys? I found some more consequences about this stereotype. Um, turns out that if you're more beautiful, you're not less intelligent. People are so beautiful with different hair colors. And this myth can go over wages and be important for blonde in the first work line. Um, yeah, so employers believe that this mill, <laughs> this myth, that, with, that blondes are dumb will also slow the advancement of qualified blondes, such as Taylor Swift and, um, what's her name? Oh, Olivia Rodrigo. So as qualified as I am, you should see how looks aren't actually how we value ourselves. We are beautiful and smart. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's go interview some other blondes like me to see how smart they are. My name is Ava and I have a 95 in English. Hi, my name is Emmy and I have a 3.9 GPA. My name is Lee. I got a 1600 on my SAT and I'm committed to UT. Hi, my name is Ms. Bell and I'm a teacher here at Farmon High School and I have a Bachelor of Science degree. So no, <laughs> not all blondes are dumb. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, man? You, you catch the star stamp last night? Oh, yeah. Three, two, three, two, three. Crazy, crazy. We have we have a couple more. I need coffee. I need coffee. Yo, you guys chill out, bro. Just one more talk. You gotta chill out. You gotta chill out. Go, go. Can you believe that all coffee drinkers are addicted to caffeine? It's crazy. Actually, this is not true. Caffeine doesn't threaten your health the way addictive drugs do. But if you stop at all caffeine cold turkey, you may feel effects in a day or two. But caffeine, unlike drugs and alcohol, doesn't cause severe withdrawal symptoms. And if you cut the amount over a few weeks, you may not have withdrawal symptoms at all. Because of this, experts don't label regular caffeine as an addiction. All right, hi, today we're here with Ms. Hall. We're gonna to talk to you more about the caffeine addiction. All right, Ms. Hall, um, do you, how much coffee would you say you drink on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, I don't drink it daily. Um... I might have it several days in a row and then go like a week without it. So it really, de it's dependent. So you would say that many people who drink caffeine or coffee could easily 
drink it without being addicted to it. Yes. Also, not everyone has the same effects of caffeine. People's bodies process it differently, so sometimes people aren't even affected by it at all. All right. Thank you. Today, we're here with Miss Curran. Um, we're going to ask her about her thoughts about her caffeine habits. Um, Miss Curran, would you, do you typically or daily drink coffee? Every morning. Would you say that it's become an addiction to where you couldn't stop if you had to? I think I could stop if I wanted to, I just don't want to. So do you think that's an addiction or do you think that's a proof that not everybody gets addicted to caffeine? I think it's proof that not everyone gets addicted because it's a choice, one that I can willingly make. Thank you. All right, we're back here with uh, Miss Gregory. Miss um, Gregory, would you, on a day-to-day -day basis, how much would you, how much caffeine or coffee would you say you drink in a day? A lot, like medically too much. Oh, oh, okay. Um, would you say, like, that it's become a problem, or do you think that you could stop if you needed to? Uh, I would never stop drinking coffee. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. All right, today we're going to be going and interviewing um, some people with some gambling addictions. Uh, who do we have here today? Uh, my name's Ryan. All right, Ryan. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, how much would you say you gamble? Uh, it's hard to tell, but maybe we could say a couple hours a day. <sighs> come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Big money, big money, big money. Big money. Would would you say that's like tens, hundreds of dollars? How much are we going for? That. Oh, God, dang it! Oh. Come on, big money, big money! Come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on. Oh, come on, bro! Dang it! Last three more, bro! Come on! It depends on the day, but yeah, as we can say, it's a substantial amount. Okay. Okay. It, let's say in the last three years, how much do you think you've won or lost in gambling? Uh, well, we're definitely down a little bit, but you know, it's hard to tell. Maybe a couple hundred bucks, maybe. I got $300 on this game. I need Philadelphia and the 76ers to win. A tie or to overtime or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my $300. No. And you don't think this is a problem at all? No, you see, life is about taking risk, you know? It's only a problem if you look at it that way. For example, in an Australian nationally representative prevalence survey, the overall problem gambling rate among Australian non-internet gamblers was 0.9%. In comparison, the rate among internet gamblers was three times higher at 2.7%. Fewer than 60% of internet gamblers were classified as non-problem gamblers, compared to more than 80% of non-internet gamblers, which was a significant difference. These are very small numbers that show that even though that the stereotypes surrounding gambling, you know, you think gamblers are all addicted, but the truth is, it's a very small number. Just like people who drink alcohol legally, you don't have to be addicted just to enjoy it. Same thing with gambling. It's the same thing. Man, I don't understand why everybody thinks everybody from Texas is just a bunch of rednecks, hillbillies, and cowboys. Like, we just living our lives doing our own thing. What's that? Oh, that that there? No, 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 no. That's just Jeffrey, man. He's he's an old pet. You know, we miss him very greatly. It's okay. Oh, he, he he's in another life. What about what's behind you? What's that? What's that? The, the great state of Texas? What? Are you kidding me? Everybody has that. How, how could they not? Are you kidding? Texans, Cowboys, we're just living life, buddy. See, we're not just all about that hunting, fishing stuff. Like, I got real hobbies. I mean, I like lifting weights over here. We got a little paintball machine. Like, I like to have fun. Here, come. I'll show you my real hobby. You come with me. This 
Z. Frisbee golf, of course. As you can see here in these couple of classrooms, no one in the building is wearing any cowboy or hillbilly attire. So this proves the misconception that everybody in Texas is a cowboy, hillbilly, or redneck. Dang tree huggers. I don't get why everybody thinks teenagers are bad drivers. I'm driving right now, and I'm doing just fine. You know, speed or not, it really don't matter. You know, as long as you're a good driver like me and like most teams, you know, it's not even that big of a deal. You know, speed limits are just a suggestion. It's not really, it ain't that deep, honestly. Just be safe and pay attention to your phone. Jeez, God, dang it. The map's lost. There goes all my money. No, because all of the skits are like, they are addictive, but, but then the, the last part is like a sizzling. Why can't it never get flawed? No, let's, let's do a practice run. Wait, go, go all the way Three, two, one. Why do people always think that dumps are so blonde? Like, I'm just living my life. We're actually pretty smart. What's going on, bro? Hey, did you catch the stars game last night? Dude, three, two, games. Crazy game. Whoa, 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 I don't know why people think dumb are so blind. Like, I'm just yeah, living my life. <laughs> Ready? Oh my god, guys, look what I just found on the internet. So, paprika. Oh. Mr. Things are better than you think. According to the Oh my god! We were doing that. Researcher, physician, and influence and in Fuck!